today I'm going to talk about one of the specific respiratory impairment which is seen in neurological patients. Neurological patients may suffer from a lot of uh, respiratory impairments including decreased chest expansion, abnormal or inefficient breathing patterns, abnormal bony changes, decreased cough effectiveness, decreased coordination of breathing with functional activity, decreased ability to phonate and decreased ability to self-maintain bronchial hygiene which can all be the result of severe neurological deficits. There can be specific respiratory impairments including compensatory breathing patterns. And today I'm going to talk about one of the compensatory breathing patterns in neurological patients that is the paradoxical breathing. Paradoxical breathing is one of the commonest uh, compensatory patterns seen in uh, patients with neurological deficits. It is also known as the seesaw breathing pattern because there is activity of uh, overactivity of one group of muscles and there is inactivity of the other group. So basically there are two types of paradoxical or seesaw breathing patterns which are seen in neurological patients. The first uh, paradoxical breathing pattern is caused by a strong diaphragm in the absence of the other two tried muscles that is the intercostal muscles and the abdominals. This can be seen particularly in patients of polio, tetraplegia or paraplegia. Normal diaphragmatic excursion requires the muscular support and function of the intercostal and abdominal muscles to optimize the diaphragm's contraction. In this type of paradoxical breathing, the diaphragm contracts, the abdominal abdomen rises excessively because of the flaccid abdominal muscle tone and the upper chest collapses because of the lack of stabilizing contraction of the intercostal muscles. This is one of the more common forms of paradoxical breathing. Here in this figure, you can see the first kind of paradoxical breathing where the diaphragmatic, strong diaphragmatic contraction is seen and there is absence of accessory muscles and abdominal muscles and hence the upper chest collapses. The second type of paradoxical breathing occurs when there is diaphragm paralysis while the upper accessory muscles are still intact. The abdominal muscles may or may not be functional. The seesaw action here is the opposite motion of the one described earlier. With this type of paradoxical breathing, the abdomen draw draws inwards during inspiration and the upper chest rises. The upper accessory muscles contract, expanding the ribcage primarily in the superior plane In second kind of paradoxical breathing, because of the paralyzed diaphragm, the lower chest collapses and the upper chest rises excessively. The abdomen draws inward during inspiration and the upper chest rises. The upper accessory muscles contract expanding the ribcage primarily in the superior plane. Anterior and lateral expansion may also occur if the intercostal and pectoralis muscles are functioning. Generally, this compensatory breathing pattern requires some kind of assisted ventilation. Because diaphragm normally supplies most of the expansion necessary to maintain adequate oxygenation levels. And because of paralysis of diaphragm, that hampers. Total accessory muscle breathing is generally incapable of providing adequate independent long-term ventilation because of likelihood of respiratory muscle fatigue. Thus, it becomes important that when we are assessing a neurological patient, we should also assess that whether they are having what kind of respiratory impairment 
uh, they have several specific kind of respiratory impairments, compensatory respiratory impairments, including the paradoxical breathing patterns and uh, adequate respiratory physiotherapy may be applied as per the need of the patient. 